Okay, we're going to call to order the regular session for uh, Wednesday, June 26, 2019. School board meeting. Uh, approval and amendment of meeting agenda items. I move to approve board meetings for June 26, 2019. Second. Second then to approve the board meeting agenda items for June 26, 2019. Corey's on her way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, three approval of minutes. I move to approve the minutes of May 8, 2019, as presented. Second. We move to second it to approve the minutes from May 8, 2019, as presented. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries. Correspondence? Aye. Aye. Public comment. And reports. Building principles report. Use your words. We teach that elementary school. You'd like me to this, go first. This one would like to go first. Awesome. <laughs> well, first and foremost, we made it, and we felt like we had a great year at the elementary school. Um, our test scores probably they're coming in now, and they're not quite as high as we'd like to see in a couple of grade levels. Those grade levels, we've we've dissected them thoroughly. And, they're a little heavier um, uh, in the SPED department and, and high-risk poverty kids or higher concentration of those. So I have a team of teachers that are volunteering to work this summer. They've already spent two days outside of their contract days um, with one with Dean Richards and one with myself doing some work around what we can do to help those kids that are at risk. We've been working down at the ESD in a conference room and really looking at a bunch of data and then subgroups of data to what we can do to do a little better job with reading interventions, but we're going to add math interventions. We don't know how yet, um, but we think we can get a 30 minute math intervention added for our kids at risk in K through two next year, no matter what, with the same level of staffing. So we're doing some creative things there. We went on a ton of field trips, thanks to uh, Ms. Mel Ms. Meltis and our bus crew. Uh, the sixth grade field trip went for three days across the state. Um, fifth grade did some outdoor school stuff. Fourth grade went to the Sunstone Mines. They went to a dairy. Uh, third grade did their normal bird migratory field trip. The second grade went to Ross Ragland. Second grade did um, a field trip. Gosh, I can't remember where they went. And then they went to the park too. First grade, uh, <laughs> they went all over the place too, but all local ones here in town. Um, and we had some interagency folks that helped with some of our, our stuff for outdoor school for Union as well. They did an outdoor school. And um, gosh, testing just seems to take longer and longer for our kids every year. And so we've really taken a look at also if we're hiring extra people to come in and help test our kids, we're now breaking down that data and looking at how those kids are doing with more read aloud type testing situations and one on one help. And we used to say, yeah, we were getting some bang for a buck and we were getting higher test scores. I don't know that we are. We're testing them kind of to death. It might take a kiddo that's reading a grade level or so below at the elementary level. They might be out of instruction for five to six weeks of the year doing nothing but testing. And that's not okay. We really would like, even if we're not going to get a, a we know we're not going to get a passing test score from this individual, we'd rather see them doing some instruction instead. So we're trying to find some different ways to address our, our regulatory issues and get more instruction time for those kiddos. That's kind of on the planning side for next year. We'll have Janice and Dean coming back next year with House Bill 3499 grant um, to do some consulting for us. Um, and gosh, it just seemed like a whirlwind from about March on. We're filled with all of our positions except custodial. They're all filled already, which helps me out quite a bit. And we're adding another third grade teacher over at Hay. So we'll have three third grades, uh, two Ks, two ones, three seconds. So we're bursting at the seams. Do you know what your numbers finished at? 
they're they're real similar to what we had. We didn't lose many. We're right around 375 at Fremont Hay, and I think we we're about 43 or so at Union. Um, and we have we only have about six kinders, I think, that want to go out to Union. But we have right now we have four kids that want to go from the upper grades to Miss Nelson's class, which helps support her numbers because hers are always a little kind of the lowest because we have those sixth graders that sometimes come to town and so we struggle in that classroom a little bit but uh, all our sixth graders at this point are staying that we know of and then we're gaining four more in one in Sandy's room and three in Lori's room so that helps and then we have the 100 year celebration for Union School on July 6th in the afternoon up there and I think they're catering a meal out there and they've got lots of memorabilia plans and some things like that going on up there <laughs> you guys have questions or something that I'm not covering? Very <laughs> uh, no, in line. Um, high school. Um, all the positions, teaching positions, but one are filled. Yay! You just need to approve them today. Um, Sped was with Ms. Vasquez. Thank you, Lonnie, for that one. That was pretty awesome. Art is Ms. Leah White. She taught one year in Alaska. Um, PE, we filled with um, Stephen Cragen. He's bringing his wife and four children. Where's he doing that? Toledo. Which is where? Up the North Coast. 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 Yeah, Guts. Is that how you say it? Yeah, Guts. 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 Yeah,
who is now Mr. Bell, the science teacher, which I didn't know that. Where is Mr. Bell? Science teacher, oh, Mr. Claire Thomas. Thomas, Mr. Yeah, Thomas. the guy that yeah. was next door. So, anyways, he's the dean of the education department. Oh, he played all the relaxing music. Yeah. He liked to music. <laughs> so I got a connection there. <laughs> so I'm done with that. But he's doing a research right now. He's writing a book on all the daily daily fund recipients. And the cool thing that he talked about was daily fund recipients are like 40 percent more likely to graduate in four years. Um, they break the, the mold on everything statistically about graduation rate. Oregon and Oregon State has some of the best graduation rates in six years, which is now the average. They're one of the top in the nation. But the daily fund um, recipients are, it's like the, the numbers are outstanding. So, you know, he's writing that research paper about how the daily fund helps students stay engaged, on task, graduate, and go on. So I thought that was. For me, that was really amazing. And then there's a gentleman there that's been going to daily fund meetings for 53 years. And I didn't know that. Wow. Um, state scores. In English language art, our seventh graders had 61% meter exceed. That was 6% higher than the state average. And these are still tentative. They haven't I've not nailed them in yet. Eighth graders, English language arts, 56 meter exceed. That was 1% above the state average. And the 11th graders had 85% meter exceed, which was 16% above the state average. In math, 7th graders were 46%, which is 6 above the state average. 8th graders, 40% meter exceeded, was 3% above the state average. And 11th graders, 41%, which was 8% greater than the state average. Um, being better than the state average is good, I'll take that. But I still think that there's some areas that we can grow and get better. Um, and a handful of teachers did better than last year. Different group of kids, but they did do better. And then um, I think one group kind of, as if you look at eighth grade falls, but that's apples to oranges. But um, it was good to look at that data, and um, we got some things in place for next year. That's Question about so the Spanish teacher is still filled. It's still unfilled and it's still open. And so, what is it? To graduate, you got to have one year of Spanish? Two? two well, not to graduate. To, to, go to, to, to go to Oregon colleges, you need the two years. Okay. Is it Spanish or alternate language? It's an alternate mm -hmm. Tell me how. Foreign, foreign language. language. Foreign language, yeah. So, have we looked at a different foreign language than Spanish? Not necessarily. I mean, Spanish would be great because I think that's probably a higher use in, yes. in our geographics. But again, if we can't find a teacher, what good is it? What good is it? Um, Does it open up a different outcome? That's what I get on it. The, the one thing is, is usually if we can hire a Spanish teacher, then they're also usually on PL. ELA endorse or ELL endorse, help me out, did I say it right? Yeah. ELL endorse. So then they can help with our, our ELL population. So it's a two-fold. Which makes it a full-time position. Makes it, yeah, makes it a full-time position. If we were to bring, let's say, bring in a French teacher, I don't know how we would get, and some French, some other languages are um, English as a second language endorsed. You don't have to be Spanish as English as a second language endorsed. But when 99% of our second language students are Spanish, it would be good to have a Spanish speaking teacher. Um, but there is an opportunity to open it up. Um, we could even actually use, if we wanted to, we could use Orban for French or German or whatever. We don't actually well, I think that there was someone that did. Uh, did yes, this so is local, right? No, no, no. Well, this, no, is no, no. this is Robertson. This is Robertson. The, the thing about the language, though, is that it has to be the same language, so you can't take, like, French 1 and Spanish 1 and account for your two years. So it has to be consecutive. So if we were going to look at that, we'd still have a transition period to still meet those kids that started, like, your Spanish 1. You'd still want to be able to offer the Spanish 2, or they would have to start over with another language. So there would be a transition period. different language, I think we would still want to keep that orbit going for the kids that didn't want to take Spanish. You want to find Spanish teacher. So, with Orbit, what kind of success did we have as far as kids and how well they did? And we got through this last year. 
I understand. I mean, are, are we getting through or are we learning? Yeah, you know. that it's a hard one even in the classroom. I guess. I mean, it's a little ecology. I mean, it's you you go through the motions, but to actually be fluent, or I mean, you really have to. Immersed. You get immersed to be fluent. You do. I took three three semesters of college Spanish, and the Spanish that I do know is because of being out with Spanish people, not in college. Right. To, to answer your question, we did a we talked to a lot of incoming freshmen, so maybe this is not the year for you to take Spanish one because it was on the orbit, and it's a it's a different learning style. Um, I would say the students who did take orbit and worked at it and communicated because of that, I think that was one of the biggest struggles, the style of communication and the style of learning did well. Did they all exceed or did they all pass or learn as well as they would with the teacher in the room? Probably not, but they, I, I would say they did learn. I guess I'm more, I would think that the ones that are doing what would do well, I'm just in general, are probably the ones that are also motivated that are definitely going on to higher education. The ones that are kind of in between are the ones that are probably going to struggle. But if they struggle in that class, then what I'm hearing is it kicks them out on even be able to go to an Oregon college. So it shuts that door for them, essentially. And we did a good job with having um, Ms. Sandra Kobe in, in the classroom, who has experience teaching, does speak Spanish, and then they were able to come and talk to either Ms. Harris or Mr. Rose. And one of the things we found out is, is every once in a while the teacher on the other end wasn't probably the best teacher because every kid had a different teacher that they communicated with in the program. But we would call Orbit and within the next day they had everything taken care of. So Orbit worked really well with us. And when those kiddos that struggled hopped on with a different teacher, they started to see with more success. So I think it's not the perfect, but right now it's working for us. It just seems like it's an old problem and needs a new solution. I mean, I think we're, let's see, a year in orbit, and what did we do? Two years. Let's go with Miss Kobe. Miss Kobe was for a partial year, and then it was Miss Kimberly. I would say that Logan learned as much in the first year as he did in the first year. Now, I'm not going to say that he learned a whole lot either year. Um, because I don't I don't have any confidence that he really knows much more than when he started. Maybe he knows more than I think. Um, I sort of doubt it, but maybe he does. And, you know, they had the things, and it was a transition in the beginning in trying to understand how to use the technology and how to make it work and how to do the speaking that they had to do. Uh, but I think with the Orbit program, they actually had to do maybe more speaking than they had to do the year before when we had the teacher. So I guess I'm, I'm going to throw out an idea. And it's just an idea. But I think we need to look at increasing the pay scale for a Spanish teacher with maybe this kind of a, for this time to get somebody in with a commitment of three or five years to be here. Are we fighting salary? Or are we fighting location? Both. Both. Are we fighting? It, 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 but there's not a lot of them. There's not a lot of them. Um, the next thing is, is, is um, it just depends on the hire. So like the young man that um, we found in the file cabinet, Rusty Zeiser did the hire packet for him and said candidate that I am sending for approval. So he was interviewed, offered the position, and was going to turn it for approval and, and turn it down. We offered it to him again this year, not knowing that, because he didn't say that to Chris and I. And he called us back and he says, my family's not ready to move to Lake. And that was the case with the other one. There was a young man from New Hampshire. Yeah. Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Oh. That was excited, ready to come. It seems like money is a good motivator at times to get people ready. Can we do yeah. a so I guess I'm just throwing out ideas that foreign language stipend that's 
above, or does that get us into I think trouble with you into some trouble with well, everything union. else? With There's the going to be a union deal, honestly. Um, plus, then you're going to have to look at, to be honest with you, stipends for sped teachers. Mm -hmm. Well, can we that'll pay for or how about know, I mean, stipends for the math teacher because you have to have so many math classes to go to a certain college. So you know, when we're gonna look, if we're gonna start looking at stipends for classes because they're required. Oh, it's a whole Didn't new. Didn't I see a new hire that also teaches English? Wasn't there? Wasn't one of our new hires or did it? Elementary. Elementary level. So can we? Don't they want it? Do a different job? <laughs> 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 no, I don't think so. <laughs> I did see that. We hire a higher within the salary range, but at a higher step without class justification, or can we pay moving expenses? Can we? Well, I think that goes back to a. I think that goes back to a union contract. Again, um, I, I honestly, I think that if you put in there, it would be no different than a tuition reimbursement for, you know, you would have to union. So I guess what I would suggest is in trying to find what that barrier is for some of these people. And this year was location for the Spanish teachers. It was location. Mm -hmm. So I guess, you know, I don't see a lot of heads going uh, every way off the line, but maybe it's uh, come to the board and say, you know, this is what's keeping this person from coming. And we can help figure out a solution to get beyond that. So or one of we the just settle the board. So Dustin, one of the things, I mean, I like the idea of another language, but the school board several years ago said Spanish was the language. So I think we need to look at if we want to add that. I think that they had a lot of kinks in order this year because I heard a lot of outside things because I'm more kind of looking in now and um, I think that they came they did a great job of getting through those and so I think that we may see orbit a little bit better we have a young lady in summer school right now that just finished her orbit and and she's a little bit behind but boy she kicked it out in less than a week and a half and finished um, but I do think you know it is a four-year university so it's not just Oregon when you look at it, that they have to have that two years of language so maybe a couple you know when I first came here we had that VTEL system, and um, God, that's dating me, but um, we did German and French, and what else? we had Latin, Latin, Latin. Latin. We had Latin. Mm -hmm. and then we had Spanish, so maybe we should look at, you know, maybe another language, as well as continue with Orbit or some other things, some other option. But I don't know what the constraints is, is, especially on, like, the daily fund are, but, you know, here's a daily fund, so you can go to a university, but yet we can't find somebody to meet the requirement for you to go to university. And maybe they have the flexibility outside of unions or whatever to do something there to bridge a gap. I guess what I'm getting at though, I think, I'm not going to speak for you guys, but I think we're willing for a creative solution in this. But if we went to them similar to what Jack's doing with an SLP, and we went to Collins McDonald and said, listen, we have a dire need, because they do look at the need in the community at times for what we need in our community when they're funding that, and said, one is special ed teachers and one is a Spanish teacher, and if we have someone that's rooted in our community that would like to go to school, would you contribute tuition towards that? That might be a way for us to supplement that. Mr. Stratton, am I hearing that you guys are gaining confidence in order? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. I, the interaction, I tutored a couple of kids here, not tutored. I kind of helped them out in my office. They come by, ask questions, we go over problems and papers and stuff together. I like the format of it. Of course, from my perspective, it was very different. I didn't understand it all, and it made sense to me. Right, but I thought it. I thought it was laid out. <laughs> I thought it was laid out pretty good for a foreign language program. I think that's an important part. It's certified teachers that are there that are available. We have them grouped together in a classroom. They're not independent, right? With somebody that's Spanish speaking within the classroom. Um, you know, we have support within our school to help when a kid was frustrated. I think the struggle was more technology driven 
than it was. Especially in the beginning. Absolutely. And then by second semester, it, it, it yeah, it, it was absolutely different. And then the summer, right, being able to offer a foreign language in the summer, ORBIT allows us to have that flexibility to get a kid caught back up, which is one of the barriers that you're talking about. Or for our tag students to take a Spanish 3 and Spanish 4, which we couldn't offer if we had a Spanish teacher here because we wouldn't have enough enrollment. So there are some other benefits that have opened up some new doors for us too, which I think is important. Is Orbit cheaper than having a teacher in the classroom and then with an aid? Yes. I mean, what keeps us from Lakeview High School or is it all online Orbit phase for every class? I think we do a lot I don't, I'm just saying that facetiously. I mean, that we ain't going, going. Because I think we all agree that the teacher in the classroom is a benefit. So Oregon is a good it's, it's working stop right gap. But I, I still think a teacher in the classroom is a benefit. We had a gentleman in my community that was a long time um, foreign language teacher, but he hasn't done it for 15 years. And we talked about asking, and I talked to him, I met him twice about him doing Spanish 1 this year. Um, but allowing the Spanish two kids to stay with Orbit because they'd already been in for one year and stay with that curriculum base and that learning style. And he was interested for a while and he came back and he said, you know, I, th I thought about for a while, I'm not ready to be back in the classroom. It was my last 12 years I wasn't in the classroom as an educator. I was working with special students and I like what I'm doing right now. So he's going to stay as a tutor for our kiddos on tutor status. You know, so we, we tried a few different avenues and you know it's the summer's still going the colleges are still open the job's still out there something well, maybe we can taste them a little bit more because they need to be getting orbit and up is an extra hour a day of tutoring or i don't know I, then I, you have more of a, a live person you i think he's three happy. periods of spanish mm -hmm. one and he's 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 retired and he's happy where he's at and he tutors a bunch for us and we might have a couple more students coming to the district so, so that's like three, three individuals that are helping five then. Mr. Rose, <laughs> yeah. this gentleman, and then. Well, it's mainly, right? No, he tutors He tutors our, our students who are on tutor staffs, not on campus, not our Spanish students. Our homebound or yeah. our, our spelled oh, kids or stuff like that. Okay. So I guess I just, last thought to wrap this up. I guess what I'm just getting at is offering a job and hearing no. Let's not necessarily stop there to figure out what else is there. I mean, what what else would it take, you know, to to consider it, and then then start having those conversations of is that even doable or not? Uh, yeah, I hear you. And I, what I was going to say is hopefully wrap this up because we can't solve this tonight. Uh, but if you guys come up with some ideas. I think the board obviously would entertain some different options, so we'll keep keep in mind. In the meantime, we'll keep that job open. See what happens. In the meantime, too, we'll keep planning on orbiting as a backup, or as the plan A, I guess, at this point. All right. Any other questions for Mr. Stratton? Right. Thank you. That's like director of the so in your packet, so this is my report on it. This is something, I don't know what it is in the packet, to be honest. Oh, it's on top, sweet. Thank you, Tandy. You're welcome. So this is, this is the, the full demographic report for each of the high schools, athletic seasons, number of participants, and the breakdown um, for each of the demographics and populations there, um, as compared to the total student body. Uh, this was something that was in uh, the district goals uh, that um, you know, that I inherited that I found out about, and I thought, you know, this is actually kind of a, an interesting an interesting goal because I, I think it does paint a pretty good picture of are we reaching all of our subpopulations? Is everyone included? Um, now, when you take another look at it, really our, our two main populations are the Hispanic slash white and white. The others are pretty small, so a change of one or two makes a big difference in percentage. Um, but that said, when we focus on those two groups that have more than five people in them, Hispanics and whites, you know, there's pretty good representation compared to this overall student body. 17% of student body being Hispanic, 
know, 15%, 13%, 15%. Okay, I don't know why, uh, let's see here. Oh, 13% of the winter. That's why 6 means 13% and 12 means 13%. That's percentage of the total winter athletes, percentage of the total spring athletes. So this was, um, this was something that uh, I collected with the NR registrar over the course of the year at the end of each season. Collected the, the numbers, went through, right, counted all of the, the, the different subpopulations. Um, there were, for example, this the one the Jack was a big one. Yeah, I don't to think. There was a, another subgroup that um, this doesn't include band, and so band was also fairly diverse. This was just our athletic teams, um, but band had some small subpopulations that were represented. Uh, like American Indian, you see five two percent of our total student body. Um, one or two of those were in Bangor, for example. But um, something to look at with the season ending up. We have our fall schedules pretty much done. We're for some games here and there for different sports, spring, uh, winter schedules are probably seventy five percent done. Um, we'll add some more in the summer when school comes around. But that's fine. Question. Okay. Thank you. Hearing none. Special Ed Directory. So, in wrapping up the year, um, the special ed teachers and also with the ESD staff, the speech pathologists and their special teachers, we meet monthly in meetings. And so, our end of year meeting was a discussion around, you know, how the year had gone and, and just kind of an open discussion, but. David Castro provided a lesson plan on teaching writing. And so um, him and Stephanie both showed samples of students in the seventh and eighth grade, ninth grade classes that um, had started their writing in the beginning of the year and what it looked like at the end. And they had a really great um, lesson plan on how to get kids writing, especially like kids writing those you know paragraphs and, and having the support sentences and the conclusion and the intro. Um, so they showed us samples of all of that. So it was a really good place to start next year. We're going to um, work on writing. Um, we will also support the schools with the math and reading as well for our students. Um, so that's kind of how we wrapped up the year. And then um, summer work crew has started and um, they started Monday. The first two weeks we'll be working in the campgrounds, um, cleaning and fence repair, fire pit rings, um, just getting, you know, clearing out any you know, broken branches, things like that. And there's um, five students, and then um, Amy's our crew leader. So. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? Okay, 6.4, Annual Comprehensive and Guidance Counseling Program. I'm gonna start with the elementary one because it's first in the packet. Okay. Um, this is the first year that I have filled one of these out, and so I kind of zipped through it with my with my uh, counselor, and looking at the high school one, it probably needed to be a little more in-depth, so I apologize for that. And if you guys have questions, just let me know, and we'll go cruise through this. Um, guidance curriculum, we use second step, and we, we have fully implemented it in years past. We backed out of that partway through the year because we, we had some pretty heavy-duty, intensive behavioral kids come in, and we needed to very quickly adjust our counseling time to behavioral, a behavioral room essentially where we had students uh, out of gen ed or general education population but were attending uh, in a classroom with just a guidance counselor one on one. So we pulled back out of that curriculum a little bit that she was teaching in the classrooms. It was still available to the teachers if they chose to teach it but she wasn't able to split her time um, between as many classrooms. So that's something that we feel like is okay, but we need to improve on individual planning. I, I very much appreciate the added FTE with a full-time counselor. Um, I don't know how we did this when Brandy had her roller skates on and was going from building to building to building between Union, Fremont, Hay, and then up at LHSDMS because we have a lot of kids in need and that population just continues to grow and a lot of kids in crisis and trauma where they can't function in the general education classroom and need to come out and do some small group behavioral work. So that has been a big improvement at the elementary school to have that. Responsive services, it's getting better all the time with the implementation of PBIS, our, our positive behavior incentive system. We have a committee that works on that of teachers and staff members and they 
plan positive activities for the kids if their behavior is at a certain expectation level. The kids go through and they do walkthroughs twice a year from station to station, from hallway behavior to how you conduct yourself at the office, what kind of questions you would ask there that would be appropriate to the bathroom behavior, recess behavior, cafeteria. And they go through those stations twice yearly to just reinforce behaviors. And implementing that and, and fine tuning it to what works for us has, has gotten better as well. And we have some plans for even uh, further development for that this fall. System supported integration. Um, we've tried to work on some new trauma techniques and th there's a PBIS World program that provides a really cool app for your teachers. So if you have a kid that is having tantrums in the classroom, you can click on behavior and there's about 25 of them on this little app and it will give you first step interventions within the classroom for a new teacher or, or, or one that just needs new tools and you try those interventions and you can collect data from those and then if that's not working you can meet with a team and go to second step interventions so that we have all the data we need if we remove a child from placement from gen ed so that we it's not just my myself saying that kid is not fit to be in gen ed we really need to have more data than that in this day and age to be able to pull a kid out of gen ed and so that's the program that we are moving towards and we'll pull that out and implement that in the fall that's one of the things we're working on Student advocacy, we felt like we were doing an excellent job in that area, the full-time counselor and her relationship with the teachers, and mostly our staff. Our staff knows what's going on with our kids. They know if they've had uh, a domestic issue over the weekend, they're getting a hold of the counselor, myself, one of our secretaries to make sure that kiddo's taken care of when they're at school and that there's just some eyes on them so that they can get back to learning. School and community resources. Um, I was a pretty strong advocate on this one and marking it at two. I would like to see stronger partnerships uh, with our community partners and I feel like the weakest right now is probably our mental health relationship. We've had some meetings with them but they've had so much organizational structure else changes in, in where they're at that it's been difficult to maintain uh, a healthy relationship, a consistent relationship is what I should say. And then uh, LBL is our information system. And I think it's probably a fantastic system, uh, but we keep putting Lonnie off on training and keep putting her off and we need to make more time to really fully utilize what that has to offer. And, that, and that's on us, is not having enough time to really look at it. So, um, The next piece of this uh, down below there that I marked was articulation between schools. Obviously, Fremont and Hay, we have a way better um, communication, line of communication because of our proximity. I feel like we could strengthen that at Union. Um, but Union doesn't have quite the amount of issues. It would be nice to be more accessible to Union as far as counseling when they had something that was immediate. They can always call, but that doesn't, that's still half an hour out for somebody to stop what they're doing and get out there if you have a child in crisis. Uh, our counselor's out there once a week, has lunch with kids, meets with kids, but it's not as immediate as what we could have. And it's just a product of how we're set up. So, and then I think we do fine. Um, communicating back and forth with the high school DMS. We have some thoughts on how to improve that with some transition meetings for behaviors uh, for this fall. And they know what kiddos are coming up, what kind of behaviors are, are coming to them, so that those kids can transition as smooth as possible. So, do you have questions for me? Thank you. I'm going to turn mine over to Ms. Harris. She and I work on this together. But I just love giving her stuff to do. So, and she came today to join us. It's called delegating, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, I think uh, one of the biggest things is, um, going through this is the guidance curriculum, uh, we felt like it was strong, but would like to strengthen that even more next year by just going to um, Oregon School Counselor. Um, association conference and being able to see and stay up with what curriculum is being used um, with a new health teacher, new health teacher both 7, 8, and 9, 11 coming in to really partnership with that um, and get in the classroom more than just academic based but um, be more available under the guidance curriculum. Um, individual planning we felt like is strong. Um, meet with all the kids throughout, you know, for, for forecasting and then semester changes and then just for kids to come in, right? They can sign up, they can come in and see me anytime and so that's definitely that and responsive, ser responsive services are probably the, the strength where um, 
kids are able to access the counselor, right? It's, it's a little bit different than elementary, where they can come in on their own. They can come in between classes. They can sign up. They can access that. And so um, those are the, the two biggest areas of strength. Um, the system-supported integration felt like is an area of growth, more growth than the others in terms of being able to gather different data. Right? We use our LBL system, and it just has so much data, and we're able to use that. But to really have our data drive some of our decisions within the, the counseling program and kind of really spend some time evaluating that both on behavior, social, emotional, and academic um, so we can make sure that, that we're integrating the things that we need to for all of our students. Again, student advocacy, just like the elementary is, is area of strength. Um, the school community resources, I felt like, um, really improved this year. We held monthly meetings with the wellness um, mental health department and probation where we staffed kids, staffed what activities were going on within our community. Um, I participate and sit on the mental health advisory board committee as well as an RDC committee for the probation. And so this year I really feel like that area grew. Um, Mr. Stratton, Mr. Rose sit in on those meetings as well. So it's really an administrative counseling team um, with our community partners. So we're in um, good communication with them. Our probation officers and youth investment coordinators are in our buildings a lot. Um, we, we provide that for them. So, um, And then obviously the LBL system um, is an area of strength. Lonnie is a great resource for that. I feel like with um, uh, Deanna in her second year within it, she's very proficient and we're able to gather some of that data both for athletics and behavioral. Um, and, and just moved a lot more smoothly this year. Um, under effectiveness of activities, our career education, I, I think, continues to grow. And that, again, we, could, um, we collaborate with our health department. So we use the career information system at 7, 8, 9th, and 11th grade in order to start um, that career education. And then in the senior year, they take, do the career um, ed personal finance class. And so partnership a lot with um, Mrs. Mines and Jackie Robinson, or the, and it will be the new health teacher coming on in order to really hit that career education piece. Um, AVID continues to grow. Um, we had it 7 through 11th, and next year we're getting to add our first AVID 12, so it'll be our first graduating class of AVID. Um, those um, seniors will be the ones that we started when they were in um, the seventh grade. Um, so super excited to have our counseling program be a part of the AVID site team um, and moving, moving AVID forward within our schools. Um, dual credit, um, super excited. Um, Kelly Klein, great partnership with Klamath Community College in our dual credit um, programs, um, biology, government, econ, our honors, English, agricultural class, um, horticulture, well-being, um, biology, um, and then Sports medicine, yep, is both Lynn Mitten and KCC. Um, we're looking at potentially our culinary program, um, going into being a dual credit and maybe a pathway where they finish with their certificate. We're also, going back to the Spanish conversation, working with KCC eventually on a synchronized classroom um, and, and continuing to grow in that partnership. So excited about all of those happenings. Brandy, can you explain what the pathway certificate is? So a certificate would mean that um, in completion of a program that they would actually finish with a, a certificate, like a culinary certificate, or um, one of the certificates we've looked at is even looking at our peer tutoring program and having that be a dual credit course instead of just a pass-fail, where they would be basically certified to be a teacher's assistant upon completing a pathway. So there's certain classes, right, that you would take consecutively to finish a certificate and be able to graduate with that. Um, classroom presentations, it was great this year to have a little bit more time. Um, and so I was able to get in um, the classrooms more to review transcripts, talk about graduation requirements, college bound. Um, and so that was an area that improved as well. Um, partnered with uh, Mr. Counts with his admin program to do um, a freshman um, parent orientation that we're going to keep going for next year to really help, you know, being a 7 through 12 
um, the freshman just kind of gets immersed, right? There's not as big of a transition, and so um, being able to help those freshman parents um, and really get on track with um, their, their freshman year, right? That's what data shows, is that they can have a successful freshman year. Um, graduation and high school outcomes are greater. Um, and then, um, much like the elementary, our articulation rate, we feel as strong between daily and um, daily middle school and like the high school. We'd always like to see that transition from the elementary to the high school continue to improve and strengthen. We do our orientations, um, we do planning with them, but I would just like to be more, more available and be able to work closer with Ms. Cahill. Um, we just haven't been able to have that time, so hopefully next year we'll be able to make some goals together as well. Anything in this class? Any questions? Okay, thank you. Seven, old business. Okay. New business, 8.1 PERS retirement request. So as you can see in your packet, <coughs> um, Mrs. Lisney has brought to Mr. Cahill uh, a retirement effective September 30th, so she will start the year. Um, she would like to continue on through 1920 and finish out the year, um, and then in fact she would also may consider going beyond the 2020 end of school year as a retired first employee back in the classroom. At the so looking for exception of her um, retirement plus continuing her on as a retiree teacher. And then the policy is attached to Accept that. Any discussion? We have a motion. Move to approve the first retirement request as presented. We move and seconded to approve the first retirement request, request as presented. All favor, sit down at the same time. Aye. Aye. Question carries. 8.2 Acceptance of engagement letter from Co op Valley Financial. I'm going to go back real quick. I think the board should probably send some sort of recognition to Miss Lizzie since she has taught here almost 30 years. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. And we would do something at the end of the okay. year, this school year, as because her retirement's effective in this next coming school year, at the end of the year as well for her, just so you guys know, they get a gift from the district and we do formal recognition at the end of the year. So it looks like something around October when she retires. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Eight point two acceptance of engagement letter of Quad Valley Financial. Okay. So we have a new um, auditor this year, brand new Umqua Valley Financial. We are in coordination with the ESD Northway Paisley, excuse, yes, Paisley, Flush and Adele um, on this, and so they kind of gave us a group deal. Um, it's basically ran through um, that we have our own individual audits. ESD pays for our audit um, every year, and that will continue. I had to give up a few things <laughs> from them, but um, it washes out at the end. Um, and so this is basically their engagement letter. They would like to have started two weeks ago. I keep putting them off. They'd like to get engaged. This is the deal that we had with Oster. Yes. Oster. Yeah. Oster is. We were all together, and then yeah, everybody ways for a year. And yeah. We're all back together. Yeah. Um, well, no, we've always been together. Oster pulled out. Year we have. No. Okay. No. We may have um, had. I may have put in a. We had to put more out. Budget line item too that we may have to pay for ours. Ours is the largest one out of the. That was group. something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we've gotten it. Sarah and I's gotten it pretty much narrowed down to where um, ESD still covers ours, even though um, we are the largest entity within this group. Um, and ours is also. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had to give up some professional development dollars in order to do this, but that just means it comes out of our pocket, which is fine. 
not a big deal. So um, the one way or the other, it would have came out, you know, on one way or the other. So um, anyway, this is just their um, engagement letter so that we can proceed on. So you said this we're in the group now, so it was a little bit better financially. No, it's not. <laughs> I mean, they, it's worth their while because they can combine, you know, they can make partial BSD. Our, our week is usually one full week, maybe two. Um, Oster used to do two, week and a half, two weeks um, just on us. Um, but what they can do is do like Adel and Plush, they can take, it's a box, you know, I mean, they just don't have as much as we do. But on site is usually the ESD, us, um, a little bit of North Lake, yes, this one. So the price is actually quite a bit more than poster, um, but it is still. It, but it's expected. It's, it's like half price of what it could be. Basically, it's a poster was half price of what it could be. Yeah. This one, it, I mean, it's going to cost us a little bit more, but we it's it estimated that for ours only. Yeah, it could easily for ours as, only. as big as the district is. It could easily be a thirty thousand dollar. Um, and so uh, they cut us a little bit of a brief just because we were in a And we didn't have anybody really apply, and it was astronomical, the one person that we did get applied. So um, we had a, this and one out of John Day that we ended up to have some sort of interest. Yep. Oakwa Valley Financial Aid is super and a lot of this, from what I understand, I haven't, like I said, I haven't got on their portal. A lot of this they may be doing off site. Um, we do uploads to them the portal, which that's probably why we're getting the break. Not physically paying for their travel to be here. Although they'll have to show up here. Any other discussion? I yep. move to approve the acceptance of the engagement letter with the Quad Valley Financial Services. Okay, so moved and seconded to approve the acceptance of engagement letter with the Quad Valley Financial as presented. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries. 8.3 adoption of supplement budget. Okay, so this will be for fiscal year 18 19. This is a supplemental piece. We received that healthy grant. Um, Healthy Schools grant of, in the amount of twelve thousand. We have we were successful in spending that, um, and so that is that first piece. The 12, the state sources of twelve thousand. Um, we spent down uh, pretty close to twelve thousand on their um, durables, which we already purchased um, water uh, deals, and there's a little bit of travel in there. And then we can also pull for their um, their. Uh, subs that they needed for that travel that we had. So we have that, and then the second piece of that is that $25,000. Um, that is for the um, TAP grant for uh, the Long Range Facility Plan. Um, and so we had we paid half of that in this fiscal year. We paid for the other half on delivery. Um, and so I really actually needed to put that in this fiscal year as a start. So those two items for our subs. I move to approve the adoption of the supplemental budget resolution number 15 is presented. Second. To approve the, to move and second to approve the adoption of the supplemental budget resolution number 15 as presented. All favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries. 8.4 adoption of budget and tax rate for 2019 20. Okay, so um, as you guys are aware, we um, have an approval from the budget committee um, uh, for, for our 1920 budget along with the tax rate. Um, our budget ended up being $13,504,502 and with a uh, imposing a tax rate of 4.5724 for permanent tax rate. Um, the three of these are kind of all, they're separate but in, you know, kind of inclusive together. Um, the 17 and 18 um, explains um, how the Indian Fund policy 
according to GASB. And then on the 18 is ending fund balances um, coming in um, across major funds. And so you can do those all three as one. I move to adopt the budget and tax rate for the school year 2019-20 approval resolution is number 16, number 17, and number 18. Second. So we have seconded to adopt the budget and tax rate for school year 2019-20 approving resolutions number 16, number 17, and number 18. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, adoption 8.5, adoption of appropriations request page. Okay. <laughs> so as I was looking back through 1819, um, I had a couple of places that were pretty significant and uh, we needed to um, reclassify. I have um, uh, in fund 100, uh, in the general fund, excuse me, under instruction, I've got some salaries. I separated the two salaries out because even I was getting confused at the end of the day when I was trying to get this done. Um, I need to appropriate for an additional 33000 I need to take out 25000 of the 1000 instructional input within the 2000 of support services. We had um, a teacher that I budgeted um, uh, in, um, in the 1000 He partially did admin. We paid him partially out of admin. So <clears throat> it was just a miscommunication. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's inclusive of that 46000 And then we were, since I was doing it um, in instruction, we were over um, within our purchase services, um, object code 300s of 8700 And in um, our support services, same deal, 21000 Just a various of things. It was across the board. We had a few. We just were over expenditures. It weren't anything um, significant, not one big thing, but it was just some really things that happened after a while. Um, so operating contingency, reduce that for the 84000 to cover those budgetary items. I move to approve the adoption of appropriations reclassification resolution number 19 as presented. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the adoption of the appropriations reclassification resolution number 19 as presented. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries. Number nine, it's a big one, consent agenda. So I got to state the conflict of interest on 9.3 and um, probably not the book, so I will abstain from the entire consent. Noted. I know that we approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Moved seconded to approve the consent agenda as presented. All in favor of the by saying aye. 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 Motion carries with one abstain. Ten announcements. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Export meeting agenda items. So we'll have. <laughs> More than likely, we have oath of office, um, new elected board members, positions two and four, um, elect chairperson and vice chairperson. If you guys are here, we held off until I think it was September last year. Um, we will probably bring back student parent staff handbooks for further discussion. And I heard Mr. Cahill say social studies adoption yes. and possibility of executive session if there's any new information. We'll just keep that going until that happens. And that date we're going to try and do... July 17th. Okay. Uh, adjournment. Second. 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 Second.